Good afternoon, I'm Raylene Ramsey. This is your afternoon news fix for Monday the 17th of June. Moves to smooth the path for granny flats. The government's publishing a discussion document today, mooting changes to the Building Act and Resource Management System. Danica McLean has more. The National New Zealand First Coalition Agreement included an undertaking to ease building the flats and other small structures up to 60 square metres. Acting Prime Minister Winston Peters says they're a great option for seniors, university children living at home and families wanting to support a loved one. Final decisions will be made later this year, with legislative changes expected mid-next year. Green Party co-leader Marama Davidson is encouraging others to get checks after announcing she has breast cancer. She'll keep working until Matariki before taking leave to have a partial mastectomy next month and further treatment. Davidson says she attended a cancer breakfast in Parliament in recent years where survivors pressed her to have her mammogram. I want to thank them because I got into the breast screening uh, programme because of their insistence. My insistence is exactly the same. Judith Collins says the government can't keep pouring money into fixing science. Parliament's first scrutiny week has begun, letting select committees question ministers and ministries about the budget. The Science, Innovation and Technology Minister has been asked why many research grants weren't topped up. Collins says it's ridiculous for scientists to all compete for the same funding and an advisory report is due this month. Even though that money is not there in this budget, the Science System Advisory Group will come up with some ideas around how we handle that research funding. In New Zealand's chair says the airline's done its best to help with the Defence Force plane's failure. The Prime Minister's business delegation flight broke down yesterday in Papua New Guinea on the way to Japan. Chris Luxon took a direct commercial flight to Tokyo and all others have now departed Brisbane flying with Air New Zealand. Airline Chair and CEO Greg Foran are with the group. Dame Therese Walsh says they were quickly aware of the issue. Air New Zealand for decades has stepped in on various scenarios where the countries needed it. Um, can't always do that but where it's possible... A union says people are being stood down over train worker pay disputes in Auckland. The Rail and Maritime Union has facilitated bargaining with employers, CAF and Auckland Rail One. Members are refusing to work overtime or shifts varying from the master roster over wages and work-life balance. It's meant cancellations and delays for Auckland train services. Union General Secretary Todd Valster says all four CAF team members have been suspended without pay. The last team got suspended on Thursday night, so it's pretty tough for the guys. That's you know no wages whatsoever, so we're rallying around to try and give them some support so they can at least pay their rent. A new NZTA safety camera opening today on State Highway 1 between Kawakawa and Moirewa in Northland has been vandalised. Repairs will take a few weeks. To sport in Queensland, coach Billy Slater has underlined Warriors second rower Kurt Capewell's utility value as the reason for his state of origin recall for Game 2 at the MCG. The Super 8 is complete at the T20 Cricket World Cup after Bangladesh clinched the last spot by virtue of a 21-run win over Nepal and St Vincent. And forward Hiram Harris is a late scratching from the tall black squad ahead of next month's FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. A knee injury has forced him out with Dan Futu replacing him. I'm Raylene Ramsey. That is your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update tomorrow morning from the News Talk ZB newsroom.